Hello everyone, good afternoon. Um, hopefully this is all working okay. Um, so welcome to the third class of the summer series, which is basically free classes that I am doing every week on Thursdays. We're trying today at noon to see if this time works a little bit better for people, but this will stay up live on the page for a few days to watch um, until next week. So if you can't catch it at this time, you can always watch it later. So today what we are covering is natural solutions, healthy ways to manage and reduce stress as well as inflammation. Um, if you aren't familiar with me or this page already, I'm Holly, I'm the owner of Renewal Fitness Coaching. I am a certified personal trainer, certified group fitness instructor, uh, certified holistic nutritionist. Additionally, I am also a beauty counter consultant and a doTERRA wellness advocate. So basically that's all to say that I am all about natural health, natural healing, and taking care of your body in a very organic way. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this topic. Today we're going to be covering stress, and we are going to talk mental and emotional and physical, and not just stress, but also inflammation. Um, these two are very closely linked. Someone in particular wanted me to discuss inflammation, um, but the two are actually very close. So most of these solutions are going to apply to both of them, whether you're dealing with mental stress from just life or you're dealing with physical stress like inflammation where it's either underneath your body or kind of deep in your body creating problems or you can see it on the outside in terms of things like swollen areas of your body. Um, give me one second. It kind of looks like my battery might be dying. <laughs> um, so pause one second. Let me set up my battery. Okay, hopefully that fixed it. All right, sorry about that. So now let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so we're gonna start with the topic of sleep because sleep is hugely important to your overall well-being, but also stress and inflammation in the body. Now, I know sleep is kind of tricky because some people have a really hard time getting sleep, um, either falling asleep or maintaining a solid sleep state throughout the night. Um, so the thing is, we're going to talk about sleep in terms of a way to manage stress, but also all of the following things that we're going to cover should also help you to sleep better. Okay. So sleep, I'm sure many people are aware that sleep is critical for your health. Um, and this is a very large topic. So I'm going to kind of skim the surface on this. Um, and we can do, if you want to know more, we can do a different class on sleep in general sometime. Um, but it is crucial for your mind, for your body, and for your emotions to be well. Um, it helps you to cope better with just daily things that happen in life, daily stressors. It is an anti-inflammatory that's very natural. Um, it helps you with muscle recovery to recover better after workouts and athletic things, endeavors. It helps to manage and reduce your hunger. Um, so keeping and keeping your... Um, hunger signals under control and working properly. Um, typically, if you sleep too little, you will end up craving unhealthy foods, sugars and carbohydrates for energy, which can lead to more stress and inflammation in your body. Um, pretty much across the board, most people need about seven to nine hours a night. Plenty of people I know function on less than that, but typically you need around that range to really be at your best to be healthy, to be well. Um, so that's kind of, that's it. That's really all I'm gonna cover. But like I said, all the following things that we're gonna hit on should also help you to sleep better and get better quality sleep. So um, after sleep, let's touch on some of the physical things that you can do in order to help reduce stress and sleep better and reduce inflammation. Okay, so number one in terms of the physical stuff is gonna be moderate exercise. 
So I think we probably all know that exercise is good for you, right? Um, especially on a fitness page. We are people who try to live active lifestyles. Um, but moderate exercise is very important for managing stress. Um, that means something like 20 to 30 minutes a day, perhaps a long, fast-paced walk, a weight training session, strength training, um, weight lifting, not overly crazy intense where you're killing your body, but just taxing the muscles enough for them to grow. Uh, and really anything, I mean, it just could be swimming, this could be biking, this could be a jog, kind of depends on your body, what moderate exercise is going to look like. That's going to be different for everyone. What this helps to do is reduce the stress hormones in your body and it releases endorphins. So those are kind of like your happy, feel good hormones. So it both helps you to feel good, but it also reduces the stress hormones released from your body. Now, the other side of exercise that is a little tough in this phase in time is that HIIT training, high intensity interval training, is super popular and for good reason. It can be great for a lot of things. It's a quick way to burn tons of calories, burn mus uh, build muscle, um, and it's typically fun and it makes you feel good afterwards. The downside of HIIT exercise and this is typically something where you're going really hard for 15 seconds up to maybe a minute and then taking a little bit of rest. <clears throat> um, or what a lot of people think that HIIT is now is just a super hard workout of tons of exercises for like an hour. That's not true HIIT, but that's a whole other topic. Um, but this type of exercise can actually be a stressor to your body. It can actually tax your adrenal glands cause the release of cortisol and stress hormones. So if you do it too much and too often, it can be too hard on your body. So if you're already stressed out and then you're doing HIIT workouts, you're just compounding stress in your life and in your body. So if you're already stressed, it's okay to do HIIT workouts from time to time, but that should not be your daily or even like every other day type of workout. If you need to improve your sleep and your stress levels and things like that, HIIT might be something you do once, maybe twice a week, and in between, focus more on quality strength training. It doesn't have to be fast, it doesn't have to be super hard and intense, but it should be tough and challenging, and you should be able to build muscle from it. And then things that are a little easier on your body that help to balance hormones, like walking, or a nice swim, or a jog where your heart rate stays kind of low, those type of things. Um, along those lines, a, another type of exercise would be things like yoga or Tai Chi. So this is kind of coming down from moderate to more like meditative, very slow recovery type of exercise. So things again like yoga, Tai Chi, um, Qigong, those kind of things. These have been shown in study after study after study to be super effective for just about any health issue that you can think of. Um, so this is not just for stress and inflammation and sleep, but overall health. These types of practices are incredibly healing and helpful to your body and to your mind and to your emotions. So engaging in something like this, kind of a slower, mindful type of practice can be incredibly good for you. I would say at least once a week, if not a couple of times a week. And this can be an hour, hour and a half, or this could be maybe a 20 minute meditative yoga practice. Maybe you're doing sun salutations, or maybe you're doing restorative yoga and calming your mind at the same time. Along those lines, not so physical anymore, but some really important practices to do are things like anything that is a mindfulness practice, so again, that might look like one of these physical things like yoga, um, but it might just be sitting down, laying down, and meditating, and being aware, and praying, or worshiping, listening to, to calming, worshipful music. Um, another thing along these lines would be gratitude journals. So basically just taking some time to think 
to be aware of what's going on in your body, to be aware of what's going on in your mind, writing it out, maybe putting those emotions on paper, putting those feelings on paper, writing out gratitude on a daily basis. All of these things help you to be a little bit more aware of your mental state, your emotions, your physical body. And when you're more aware, you can kind of deal with things better. And it really, these are incredibly stress relieving things to do, especially things like gratitude and prayer um, and just surrendering to God it helps to bring so much relief to stress in our lives. These are also very good for sleep. Um, and then still in that same vein would also be breath work. So there are a variety of ways of working with and kind of manipulating your breath that again, I won't dive into, but a lot of this is basically designed to help you again be mindful and to slow your breath down. A lot of us live these very fast paced lives. Sometimes we don't even realize how quick we breathe or how shallow we breathe. And when you stop and you focus on your breath, it helps you to take very deep, long breaths, calm your whole nervous system down. So this is very effective for parasympathetic activity and reducing sympathetic activity. Sympathetic being like the fight or flight uh, response, kind of a high adrenaline response. The exhalation, when you slow down your exhales, it reduces stress and sympathetic activity dramatically. So even just really focusing on slow exhales and big deep inhales, again, this could be 30 seconds throughout your day. It doesn't necessarily have to be an hour of laying on the floor and practicing this. It can be short little bouts throughout the day too. Another thing that you can do physically, which a lot of people appreciate, if you are married, then sex is also a good way to help you relax. Um, it has a lot of physical relaxation um, effects, releases chemicals, and it releases endorphins. So it makes you just kind of like exercise. It makes you feel good and it reduces stress type hormones. It also helps you to fall asleep better. Getting a massage is another means of helping to heal your body and reduce stress. And this could be maybe your spouse, your significant other helps to give you a little back rub, or you go to an actual spa or a masseuse and have them do, you know, a full body massage. It's incredibly stress relieving. All you're doing is basically laying there. Um, but the physical touch of another human being is very healing to the body. And especially when you're doing that in a state of just relaxation, especially if you can get like some calming music on and maybe diffuse some calming essential oils, um, use a massage oil that has calming smells and oils and it can be helpful. So getting a massage regularly or even just kind of a quick back rub from someone else can be a really good way of helping to deal with stress. All right, so let's move on some from some of the not so like physical methods of these things, but let's move into some other, maybe sometimes less common ways, especially on a fitness and health forum. So I kind of mentioned essential oils with massage. So essential oils are a really good way to reduce stress, reduce inflammation. And this is again, from a mental perspective, a emotional, as well as a physical. So different ways that you can use essential oils would be diffusing. And if you can see, so I have a little mini diffuser going right here. You can kind of see the, where is it? See the steam coming out of there. So I've got essential oils going in here. That's a really good way to, when that hits your olfactory bulb and gets into your hypothalamus and limbic system, it releases hormones that communicate things to your body. So if you're stressed out and you are inhaling something like lavender or vetiver or orange, it can help to boost your mood and it can help to tell your body, relax, chill out. So this is a really good thing to have at your desk. You can do a little mini diffuser like that. You can also put like just a, you can keep a little bottle at your desk. And if you need, you can just smell it right out of the bottle. Um, I sometimes will just keep a bottle at my desk open and just having it open, you can still smell it. So if you're in a place where you can't be using a diffuser all day, you can do that. Um, you can also put a couple drops in your hands, rub that and inhale it as a really good kind of quick and easy diffuser. 
You can roll it onto pulse points like your wrists, behind the ears, on your neck and back, on your feet, on your abdomen, on your chest. And also sometimes the oil itself is effective at reducing stress, but sometimes the action of going, okay, I'm going to do something now to help me calm down um, and manage stress helps with the mindfulness stuff and helps you to go, okay, stop and pause for a second. And sometimes I like to take things, I mean, there's an essential oil called Breathe that I really like that's helpful for respiratory. And just that name sometimes can be a reminder of, okay, I'm going to inhale this in and I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna stop and breathe and take a deep inhale to get those chemicals up in my brain, those little molecules working. And I'm gonna work on my breath for a second and just slow everything down. So even just that can be really relaxing to, again, inhale a calming oil. Um, you can also put these in a bath. So maybe add to some Epsom salts or a carrier oil, put that in your bath and soak in it at the end of the night. Again, the oils are gonna come into your body all the way down to your cells. The essential oils get into your cells to actually create chemical changes. And at the same time, a bath is incredibly soothing and relaxing. So that's kind of two different ways at once to calm down and relax your body. Some really good oils for stress are lavender, Roman chamomile, vetiver, frankincense, ylang ylang, orange and citrus oils, and these ones are more of an uplifting, so they're not as much of a stress reducer necessarily, but they help boost the mood. And then uh, there are some specific blends, so different companies have different blends. I sell doTERRA essential oils. Um, you'll see other posts on my page about it, but within doTERRA there are some blends that are very good called adaptive, past tense, peace, and balance. And these are all ones that can have a very calming, grounding, relaxing effect and help you to adapt to and manage stressful situations and stressful emotions. One second for a sip. And then oils for inflammation. So when you're actually having physical inflammation going on in your body, frankincense is really good for this. Frankincense, when you're using doTERRA oils specifically, Okay, so not other brands of cheapy oils, but a truly pure oil like doTERRA, you can take frankincense internally. So you can put it under your tongue or you can put it in some water and drink it. Similarly, you can do this with lavender and both of these are very good for inflammation. So you can take them internally. You can put them into veggie capsules as well if you don't want to actually taste them. Or you can massage and rub them onto your body. So you can add into a lotion or a carrier oil and rub these onto the affected area. So say your legs are inflamed, or your knees inflamed, or your wrist is having some pain and issues, you can rub the oil on that area. And best to kind of do a massage at the same time, because then you can kind of relax the muscles at the same time that you're using the oils, and it helps to get them absorbed. Um, other really good one is turmeric, as well as patchouli, ginger, and copaiba, or copaiba. These are all good for inflammation. So ones that you can rub on your body and some of these you can take internally and those will help to reduce inflammation. The other ones will help with stress. Okay, then probably one of the least familiar methods is a PEMF mat or any PEMF technology. PEMF stands for Pulse Electromagnetic Fields and the premise of this is basically you are using some sort of device or mat to lay on or put it on your body and it is working so our bodies if you don't know are constantly sending chemical and electrical signals we are full of electrical energy going on um, and so what the PEMF mat does is it has electro electromagnetic pulses that it sends and so it reaches deep down into the cells and the organs and it helps with cell repair, it helps with cell communication, it helps to repair things that are going on. Um, so it's been shown that when it's used regularly, it can change the body's stress responses by directly acting on areas like the endocrine system, so our hormones, and the nervous systems, along with, like I said, all the cells and organs in the body. Um, it's been shown that it can alter 
your stress response by acting on these areas and it acts also on the hypothalamus and actually can increase the excretion of adrenaline from your body via your urine. And it's helped to, it shows uh, that it helps to inhibit sympathetic activity and adrenal gland activity. So basically those stress responses I meant, mentioned earlier and stress hormones, it helps to inactivate those things. Um, it's been shown that transcranial PEMF, um, this was approved by the FDA in 2011 to treat severe drug resistant depression. So these things, this is not like a total fringe weird thing, even though it's not well known. These are FDA approved treatments. You will find these in clinical places, maybe some hospitals. Um, you can go to places and pay to use things like PAMF um, applications, devices, or mats. Um, these are really good for fighting chronic inflammation. And they basically send a mild electrical current into your cells, and these can slow or stop the release of pain in the inf inflammatory mediators. They increase blood flow and restore normal cell uh, interaction. Now these should be used on a pretty daily basis to be the most effective. So this is not necessarily something you go and do once a month or once every three months and expect to see a great response from it. So maybe some people have um, medical options where they can do this on a regular basis. The easiest thing is just to get one into your home. Uh, so there are things like, hold on. Uh, so we have at home, we got a we got a mat, a PEMF mat that came with the mat as well as this little face mask. So you can, this is designed for the face. You basically just lay on the floor and hold it there um, and turn that on. There's also little devices like this little thing. This is basically a, a portable version that helps to block um, uh, electric signals and things from getting to your body. And then I don't know how well I can show you this, but this is what the mat looks like, if you can see it in the box, obviously. Um, so the, the mat is super cool. We use it all the time. And this can actually be really good for combining with meditation, prayer, essential oils. Like it's perfect to lay on the mat for about 15, 20 minutes. That's really most of the time all you need to use it for. It doesn't have to be super long. Lay down on that, put on some calming music or you know, meditate, um, put on worship music, pray, think, be mindful. I love to diffuse essential oils at the same time as I'm that I'm doing that. So you're getting a whole bunch of these stress relieving and anti-inflammatory things at the same time. So that's a super cool thing. These can range in prices, um, but I will put, when I'm done with this, I'll put a link for our mat in the comments so you can purchase from there if you want. Um, I think sometimes you can get these for as little as like five or $600. Sometimes it goes up to like $2,000 depending on what you want. Um, but I would say it's a, it's a worthwhile investment because of all that it can help you to do, even in terms of reducing pain, helping you to sleep, all those types of things. Um, a couple of other kind of random things that can help with stress are crying. So crying, interestingly enough, if you don't know this, actually helps your body to excrete stress hormones like ACTH without metabolizing it first. So I think most of us know that crying is a good outlet, but it actually physically helps to get rid of some of those stress hormones. So it's very stress relieving to just get it out in a good cry sometimes, um, to not always feel like you have to be strong or like crying is bad or weak or anything let it out. It's very good for your body. It's very healing. Um, another thing that you can do if you're dealing more with like a mental stress, just the craziness of life, is to do a media fast. So maybe taking a break from the news or taking a break from social media. Sometimes the influx of bad news or even the influx of comparison from other people or gives you that feeling of like you're not doing enough or the world's falling apart or whatever. Taking a break from these things can be really helpful, whether it's one day or one month. Try and take a break from those things sometimes and see if it doesn't help with your stress. Okay, now let's move on to some nutritional methods of, this is gonna be a little bit more geared towards inflammation and dealing with inflammation, but at the same time, again, when you're eating these types of foods, it will help to deal and manage with stress because a lot of foods can be stressful on your body um, and they're not really helping you where these things can actually be helpful to your mental and emotional and physical state. 
Um, so again, primarily these are for inflammation, but also they help with boosting immunity. So these, all these types of foods to eat or not eat will help to boost immunity, reduce inflammation, reduce stress. So key tip, I'm sure you already know this, but as a reminder, try to drink a lot of water every single day. At the very least, do like your 64 ounces that we always heard, right? Like eight, eight ounce glasses per day. Um, even up to about half your body weight in water daily. And this might, this is primarily water, but you can get this too from tea or, I don't really promote juices, but if you drink juice, like a little bit of that. Um, a lot of fruits and vegetables have a lot of water. I mean, things like watermelon can be helpful to add on top of that 64 ounces. So try and drink a ton of water per day. It's very detoxifying for your body, helps to reduce inflammation and get rid of excess salt in the body, which can contribute. Um, try to get rid of stress inducing foods. So things like refined sugar and flour, like white flours, things like that, any processed foods. So foods that looked one way when they started and after a whole lot of processing end up on your grocery store, grocery store shelves in a box looking very different from what they started, um, i.e. hot dogs, things like that. Um, alcohol, fried foods, trans fats, and processed meats. Again, like hot dogs, salami, bacon, these types of things are very, go through a lot of price processing. They look nothing like they came out of the animal, those types of foods. Um, or, you know, different bars and different chips and crackers and cereals and things that you find on the aisles. Like there's nothing like that in nature, right? So those types of foods can cause stress on your body. If you go back to the first week that I taught about healthy, clean food swaps you can make, these are the types of foods that do stress out your body because your body doesn't really know how to process them. They're not, de your body's not designed to process these types of foods. Um, so get rid of those. Make sure you get enough vitamin D. So you're either out in the sun every day for about 20 to 10 to 20 minutes getting direct sunlight, or since most people don't do that or may not even physically health wise be able to do that, take a vitamin D supplement majority of people are deficient in vitamin D. So anywhere from about 600 IU daily to 2000 IU kind of depends on how much sun exposure you're getting. If you are outside for 10 or so minutes a day, you don't need 2000 IU per day. Um, but this is something I would talk to your doctor about or do a little bit more research on to figure out what the right amount is for you. But check in with, uh, yeah, primarily your doctor to see what they would say. Uh, unless you're already working with like a registered dietitian or something, they can help you with that as well. Um, cut out caffeine. So caffeine is very stressful to the body. It causes anxiety. Um, it increases adrenal response and can be very taxing on your body. So try to either cut completely caffeine out of your life or reduce it drastically. So switching to decaf coffee versus regular coffee, switching to green tea, which does have caffeine, but it's at least less than your typical cup of coffee. I've put many things on this page before, like mud water and rise coffee that have very low caffeine and are a good swap from your typical cup of caffeine. Even cutting out things like soda, I mean, that should be out of your diet anyway, regardless, but anything like Coke or Pepsi that has caffeine in it, um, and la, like black teas, things like that, switch from like a black tea to an herbal tea, even things like a lot of chocolate, chocolate has caffeine in it. Um, and then take your vitamins and supplements. So I'm going to go through some herb supplements and vitamins that can be very helpful for inflammation and just keeping a body healthy and good immunity. So some vitamins that are good to take, doTERRA that I mentioned earlier that has essential oils, they're actually, even though it's an essential oil company, the primary like best seller that doTERRA has is vitamins and supplements. So they have a line called the Lifelong Vitality, which is three different supplements, which basically covers your omega-3s, your fatty acids that are very important to health, covers your main vitamins and minerals, and then kind of like cellular antioxidant support. So a lot of different herbs and essential oils and things in there that help with your cellular health. Those can be really good for helping to improve gut health, improve inflammation, heal cellular level stuff going on um, so that you feel better, you have better energy, and you're going to be dealing with less pain and issues like that in your body. 
Then different herbs that can be helpful for dealing with uh, stress and inflammation. Turmeric is amazing for inflammation. If you're not already taking it, take a turmeric supplement, one that has black pepper in it because the black pepper helps to actually absorb it. If you don't have something like that in there, a lot of the turmeric can just kind of pass right through your body without being absorbed. Um, St. John's wort and nutmeg and lemon balm and magnesium are all very calming to the body. These can also help with sleep, things like depression, anxiety. Um, magne magnesium, mostly I've seen that citrate is the thing that kind of magnesium citrate helps with stress. Um, go to cola is an herb that helps to relieve stress. Um, rhodiola. And then there's some mushrooms. I've also talked about on this page before, adaptogenic type mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms that are really good for inflammation as well as tons of other health things. Um, but lion's mane, reishi, and ashwagandha are three very good mushrooms for helping to manage stress. Things like ashwagandha are what's called an adaptogen. And these, basically, if you're super stressed out, it's gonna help to reduce that stress in your body. If you're not stressed out enough, like some people might be not moving enough, not really having any type of physical or emotional excitement in their life and actually have too low of levels of stress, it can help boost you back up. Um, so these are really good things. Generally, you're gonna find them in like a supplement or a powder form, so either a capsule or a powder. They come in a lot of coffees and different drinks these days not like a mushroom that you're going to go to your local grocery store and find and lift, unless you live in certain parts of the world that sell these at like markets and things like that um but you can find these at a lot of health food stores amazon that type of thing i will also put a link down below after this in the comments for a company that i love called mountain rose herbs they have tons of high quality herbs everything from like the powdered form to the leaf form to supplement form to tinctures, so all kinds of different ways that you can take them. They've got all these herbs and a gajillion more. Um, so, and they have really good prices too. So I'll put a link down there um, after this so that you can go there if you wanna get some of these supplements. And then different anti-inflammatory foods. So really good things to eat are avocado, wild caught salmon, and other fatty fish for things like omega-3s. Just make sure your fish is wild caught and not farm raised. Nuts, berries, leafy greens, unrefined whole grains like oats, brown rice, that type of thing, beans of any sort, B vitamins, um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, um, and broccoli sprouts. These things have high sulforaphane levels which help to fight inflammation in your body. Green tea is good for this. Extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, tomatoes and cherries and cherries also can be beneficial for sleep so these are some of like the most basic anti-inflammatory foods but these are also some of the healthiest foods that are packed with vitamins and minerals and nutrients for your body to also have good energy to sleep well to maintain good health to boost your immunity so that is everything that I have to share with you today. That's definitely not everything in the world for stress and inflammation, but we could be here all day talking about that. So these are some of the key things that are actually very easy to do that you can start implementing it today. Um, so let me just see. Okay, I was just going to check if there's any questions. Um, if you have any questions after the fact, though, I know, I know a lot of people have to watch these afterwards, please leave your questions down in the comments so that I can either reply directly to you or incorporate them into a future video. And then just a couple other things is um, next week I will be back here with another class at 12 o'clock about how to plan your workout. So things like figuring out if you want to work out but you're not quite sure how to start, like how many reps should you be doing, what types of exercises, how many exercises, some of the basics to get started with a good workout routine. And then on July 1st, I have a post on my page about a class I'm doing called the Oil Experience. So I mentioned a lot about essential oils here today. If you want to learn more about them, what they are, how to use them, how they can benefit you, what some of maybe the best oils to get started with are, then you can attend that class. You will, I would love to have signups by tomorrow, ideally, but if you still wanna come, just 
let me know and I will get your samples out to you. If they don't arrive in time for the class, you can use them afterwards. But I will send four samples of essential oils out so that you can have the oils in your hands when we go through the class so you can smell them, you can try them, you can experience them, and you should have enough to last for probably a week or so to try them out. So if you want to attend that class, let me know. You can just shoot me a message. But the easiest thing to do is go to my website at renewalfitcoach.com and under programs, you'll see a little sign up section. Go to the sign ups and there you will see the oil experience and you can do your RSVP and payment there. And then I will send out everything to you. So that's going to be July 1st at 7 p.m. If you can't attend at that time, 7 p.m. Pacific time, Go ahead and sign up. I'm going to record the class and I will make it avail available to you afterwards. You can still learn it and go through it all even if you can't make it at that exact time. So that is all for today. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Again, any questions, let me know. And if you need more personal help with any of this stuff, you need someone like me to coach you through some of this stuff to get you going, then please reach out to me. I would love to help you. We can do a fitness assessment, a nutrition assessment, or a general health consult to try and get you going and figuring out some of these ways that you can um, improve your health in your life. So I will hope to see you here next week at 12 o'clock. Until then, have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Stay safe and healthy. Take care.